This video will explain weight agnostic neural networks. This is a really interesting paper that completely changes the way that we think about how neural networks can be used. Usually we think of neural networks as only being useful once they've been fine-tuned with gradient descent and backpropagation, making small adjustments to each weight in the neural network until it's perfectly fitted for a given task. However, this paper is going to show how you can adapt the topology of a neural network through neural architecture search methods using evolutionary algorithms such that a neural network where every weight has the exact same value can perform reinforcement learning tasks and MNIST classification. This idea is inspired by nature with examples like duck hatchlings. Duck hatchlings are born and based on the connectivity in their brain or something, they already know how to do things like eat and swimming. So neural architecture search is one of the hottest ideas in deep learning and artificial intelligence. And it's this idea of parameterizing the space of possible uh, building block cells of deep neural networks like this, such that you stack them on top of one another and form image classification and recurrent neural networks. So this idea is going to be the search for neural architectures, but without training the weights. So usually in current neural architecture search methods, the, there is some uh, process like random search, evolutionary search, or a reinforcement learning controller that designs a neural network architecture, and then that architecture is trained on some kind of auxiliary data set, and then that's how you evaluate it. But in this case, you don't even need to train the child network. You just plug in that same weight parameter for every single weight and then evaluate it, and there you go. So again, all the networks in this uh, weight agnostic neural network have the same weight parameter. And the beauty of this is that that weight parameter is easily tunable as well. And you can imagine using the different scales of weight parameters to easily form ensembles of neural networks. This technique of weight agnostic neural networks is able to achieve about 92% accuracy on MNIST without any weight training. So again, this is also really appealing for speeding up neural architecture search in AutoML. When you sample a new neural network architecture, rather than training the child network, you would just plug in the same weight value for all the parameters and then you would instantly already have your evaluation of the design architecture. This can additionally be useful if you want to combine neural architecture search with other hyperparameter optimizations in AutoML like learning rates, uh, optimizer parameters like the beta 1, beta 2, momentum terms in the atom optimizer, or miscellaneous data augmentation parameters. So this is the high level idea of weight agnostic neural networks and the evolutionary search algorithm that they use to find these neural networks that can you know, perform the reinforcement learning tasks without the need to uh, train the weights. So first they initialize a population of minimal networks, the simplest design possible. Then they evaluate each network with this range of plus 2, plus 1, this is uh, plus 0 0.5, minus 0 0.5, minus 1, and minus 2. Then they rank the neural networks based on their performance, the mean performance across the weights, and the max performance, as well as the complexity of the network. And then they rank them and you know, select the best in a standard evolutionary algorithm type of way. So this is the mutation space that the evolutionary algorithm uses to explore through different neural network architectures. It can either choose to add a no insert a node to the uh, network, it can choose to add a new connection. It can change an activation function. So for example, selecting this and changing the activation function from say sigmoid to tan H or ReLU. And this is just an example of the different activation functions that it's allowed to choose between. So in the evolutionary algorithm, there's a technique for evaluating the found networks to choose which, uh, which topologies survive to the next round of evolution and mutation. So they're evaluated across these six different weight values, meaning each of the uh, weights in the neural network has the same weight value. Or they would all be minus two, all minus one, or all plus two, for example. So they, they uh, evaluate them on these three criteria, the mean performance across the set of weight values, the maximum performance, and then they're penalized by the number of connections in the network. However, adding complexity to the network may be a long-term payoff, like designing this, inserting a new node or adding a new connection, it may take a little bit for this uh, complexity addition to pay off. So they weight the exploration exploitation with an 80% to 20% ratio, where this symbolizes how frequently they also factor in the number of connections in the network. So for example, 80% of the time, they do penalize you for the number of connections in the network, but 20% of the time, they, don't, they ignore it completely. So these are the reinforcement learning tasks that they evaluate the weight agnostic neural networks on. The first task the weight agnostic neural network is evaluated on is the cart pull balancing problem. In this problem, the neural network has to uh, try to balance this uh, pole in the middle of the network, and it's rewarded for how long it keeps it above the cart. As an output, it has uh, a force uh, output, which is like how much force it applies right, and then negative would be applying force to the left. The other two tasks the weight agnostic neural network is evaluated on is the bipedal walker reinforcement learning task, where it has to learn through a series of inputs 
uh, forces to put on the hip and knee joints of the bipedal walker. The other task is the uh, car racing problem where the input image is compressed into this Z1 to Z14 latent space through a variational autoencoder. And then it has to learn steer, gas, and brakes outputs in the reinforcement learning environment to maximize the, uh, I think it's trying to run over as many tiles as it can. This slide shows the evolution of the weight agnostic neural network on the cart pole balancing task. By generation eight, the connections and topology of the network are basically random with respect to the input. However, by generation 32, the network learns to associate the position of the cart with the velocity of the cart. By generation 128, it learns a much more advanced way of weighing all these different inputs to control the force of the cart. And this, these plots show how it performs uh, with the reward with respect to different shared weight values. So obviously when the shared weight value is zero, no, no information goes through the network at all. But you see also so, somewhat interestingly that it looks like it performs better on the far left and right ends of the spectrum on both cases. So these are the results uh, across the different reinforcement learning tasks of the weight agnostic neural network compared to a fixed topology network. Most interestingly, you see how the random shared weight performs terribly for fixed topology networks, whereas the weight agnostic neural network search algorithm is able to make this kind of idea work. Also, you see when you tune the weights of the random initial weights using the same topology, you get a pretty similar performance with both networks. Although, somewhat disappointingly, although they say that if this was achieved, it would be sort of hilarious, but they, they aren't really able to tune the shared weight to beat uh, gradient descent and tuning weights uh, completely. So this is an example of the MNIST image classification experiment and using weight agnostic neural networks for this task. So first what they do is they resize the MNIST data set from 28 by 28 to 16 by 16 and then flatten it like this and then use the same algorithm to classify the digits. This results in, uh, in these accuracy scores using the weight agnostic neural networks with different kinds of uh, parameters on the way that you structure the weight agnostic neural network. Some other ideas that are interesting in the discussion of weight agnostic neural networks are Bayesian neural networks. A Bayesian neural network has weight parameters, but they're not fixed values. They're sampled from a distribution, usually a normal distribution. And this helps enormously with uncertainty estimation because you can easily resample the weight values to get different predictions. And then you have sort of like a, in the same way that you would get an ensemble of weight agnostic neural networks by aggregating the predictions of say shared weight parameter minus two, minus one, up to plus one, plus two, you would do the same thing by sampling the weight parameters from the Bayesian uh, neural network. So algorithmic information theory is another idea that is integrated into the design of the search space by penalizing the networks for added complexity. The network pruning and supermask is another really interesting study that takes a randomly initialized convolutional neural network and searches for a pruning mask that's able to uh, perform well on MNIST classification. And this rivals the performance with the weight agnostic neural network on MNIST classification. So what the author suggests is that this is an interesting study, but they're uh, limited by their initial complexity, whereas the weight agnostic neural network is unbounded in what it can become. So what, another interesting area for future work in this uh, area of research is to go past evolutionary search and maybe use something like DART's differentiable architecture search in the space of weight agnostic neural networks. Thanks for watching this video from Henry AI Labs on weight agnostic neural networks. Please subscribe for more deep learning and artificial intelligence videos.